Today I want to show you how to make a potato bag that you can use to um, heat up your, or cook I should say, your potatoes in the microwave. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. It it's kind of like a little envelope. I use a piece of muslin in the middle and then you have to have, everything you need to use is cotton. I'll show you how we do it. I need a six inch piece of ribbon or I can make a, a holder out of this fabric. But this, in this case I didn't. So you put the first layer down is your cotton um, lining. I think this is, it's not really batting. It's made for um, for using in the microwave. It's cotton. And then I have a piece of muslin and then I have a piece of fabric. And this particular one me measures 12 by 19. Now it is probably better if you um, have it 12 by 20, but this just happens to be the way I made it. So I'm going to get my machine and I'm going to put it on a straight stitch and I'm going to sew across the two short sides. So remember I have my, my um, lining fabric. I guess it's called, like it's kind of a batting thing, but see how flat it is? But make sure that it is 100% cotton. And then on top of that, I have my piece of muslin. And then face down, I have my, my good fabric that's going to be on the outside. So I'm going to make a quarter inch seam. And I want to make sure that I catch all three layers. And I always back stitch. at the beginning and at the end. I always trim my threads because if I wait till later, I always forget. So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and flat and I'm at my guest house doing this so I don't have my iron with me. So you just have to pretend that I'm ironing and this would have started out nice and ironed and flat. All right. Now, if I was at home and I had my serger, I would probably serge this, but I'm not and I don't, so I'm just gonna trim it. And I don't know if this one is cut wonky or what, but it's just not quite straight. Maybe I didn't lay it out there straight or something. These don't take very long to make after you get your fabric cut. Anyway, I just, there's my seam. I just trimmed it. If I had pinking shears here, I might use those too. Whatever you have, you work with what you have. So I had a pin holding these together. So I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to go between my my good my outside fabric and my muslin and I'm going to turn it right side out. And this again is where I would press. Always always press things because it just makes your work look so much more professional. So I'm going to flatten that all out and now I'm going to top stitch along either um, end the short ends. And again, I'm just going to do it as wide as I'm going to run my um, fabric along the edge of this fabric over here. And I just have to, since I don't press, didn't press it, I'm just going to hang on to it and try to make sure I go along the edge and sort of finger press it, if you will. Just making sure that I'm getting... Uh, 
I don't backstitch here because I'm going to be um, going across the other way. So I will be basically setting that seam there. That's probably not the proper word for it. <laughs> I actually did take home ec in school. Six years of it. So you would think I would know the proper terms for things. I always like to have my um, machine on a table that I can push it back and um, use my in front of my sewing machine for things. So this is where this piece of ribbon is going to come in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one side down approximately three inches and I'm going to put my ribbon in here so that it sticks out just barely. See, I put my ribbon inside of there, fold it in half, and this is approximately, well, I, let, let me measure and see how far it is. Oh, three inches exactly. Wow. So that one goes in first. Now, I made a mistake. I need to put my ribbon down here at the end closer to the end because I'm not going to be folding this all the way up. I'm going to only be folding it over a couple of inches. So I want to be sure that I catch that. So I'm going to put it there. And then this gets folded up. I guess it doesn't matter because I'm going to be sewing all along that. So never mind. Put it wherever, wherever it feels good to you. And then just fold this over an inch or so. I always wonder how, how accurate I am. Yeah, I folded it over about an inch and a quarter or so. Since this has this ribbon here, I am going to put a um, pin in it, or you can use a clip. I love these clips. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure all this is nicely um, straight here. And then I'm just going to sew down each side. So I'm going to um, clip the other side too so it doesn't come out all cattywampus. Don't want those cattywampus things. So now I'm just going to make another seam. And here I will backstitch. And I will move my pin so I don't accidentally run over it. Same thing with my clip. backstitch front top and bottom oh my looks like I ran out of thread but you know what that's part of sewing my bobbins empty so I might as well show you what I do when I change um, bobbins I bought one of these Dollar Tree makeup brushes and every time I change my bobbin I clean this area. So now I take the case out. Yep, my bobbin's empty. I watched a um, some sewing machine repair man and he said not to use that canned air because it makes it, uh, it drives the um, dirt and lint and stuff back down into your machine so always make sure that you know how to which way to put your um, bobbin in if you don't know you need to find out but most of the time what i do is i put it so that it's pulling away from me and then i hold this so that i can put it together and then i know that that's correct and then i just hold it put it through the little Thing. insert it into my machine until you hear a click 
bring your thread up and you're ready to sew again. I remember when I was younger, it used to irritate me very much to have to stop and fill up bobbins or change my thread or whatever. And you know, after years of sewing, you just get used to it. It's just part of sewing. Well, that didn't work so well because guess what my top thread came unthreaded and my bottom thread is still there so this is part of part of sewing so I'll bring it up and let you watch while I quickly re-thread my machine back down so you can see Now, I have trouble holding my thread still while I'm putting it through the needle. So I have come up with a way to um, hold it so that it goes, stays, stays still enough. So what I do is I hold it between my two fingers because my hands shake enough that if I do, try to do it with one it just shakes <laughs> all over the place, and it's ridiculous, but that, this works for me. So, there we're re-threaded. Pull on it to make sure that it's gonna come out right. Now we'll sew it again. I always hold my thread. You can either hold your thread, or you can bring your needle down. And that keeps it from eating your thread. Let's see if I'm sewing this. Yep, I'm sewing like a champ. Alrighty. We're practically done. Alright, we'll see how this turned out. Clipping again. And I also am the, now I'm going to since I don't have my serger, I'm am going to put a um, zigzag along these two ends because this is going to get a lot of turning in and out and all that kind of thing and I want it to be strong. And the reason you need to use everything cotton is because you don't want um, your thread to melt, you don't want your uh, fabric or your lining to melt because these are gonna, if you if you sell it to somebody who really wants to use it, they're gonna get a lot of use of it. And so I always try to make sure at my stress points that I have double stitch back and forth. I didn't do it on this one. But a lot of times what I'll do, um, Right here, where at the where it's going to be turned a lot, right here, I'll go back and forth because this part is going to bit, get turned a lot. So now I'm going to turn it right side out, and all I do is just go down here and push out my corners. Come up here and push out my corners. And there's my little hanger. And there you go. It's got a little thing to hold it up. And there's your potato bag. And I also saw that you can, you can um, cook popcorn in these things. I believe it's a fourth a cup of popcorn. Anyway, this one I didn't have any ribbon yet. So I didn't um, use the ribbon. This one I did. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.